Well, I want you to just take a moment and think of something. This should be very brief today. Of course, they all should be brief. I should be a brief person. But nevertheless, uh, consider with me this point that I, I think you know kind of stands out. When the Word of God says in Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10 that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, that's an interesting thing. God says, look, I want you to fear me. And fear, we can say reverence, but fear is fear. Uh, what does the fear of the Lord do for us? It says it's the beginning of knowledge, by the way. and goes on to say, but fools hate knowledge in Proverbs 1.7. But just take a moment and think about that. Just fear of God. How does that affect us? Well, if we teach our children to fear the Lord, then there's always somebody they're accountable to, even when they don't see us. I think it's very interesting. Uh, it was mentioned, something I heard recently, I wanted to look it up, and it was I found it to be true. In Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 1, God says, look, I want you to, you know, I'm the Lord, I'm communicating these things to you. In verse 2, I, I want you to, be perfect. Literally, I want you to be holy because I'm holy. But then in verse 3, it says, I want you to fear your mother and your father. Wow. Now, we're not to live fearing man. That, that, that certainly would be destructive. Remember what Jesus said in John chapter 5 when he was speaking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He said, you, you guys can't have a right relationship with the Father because you fear you're more concerned about what other people think of you than you are about God himself. He said the very same thing in John 12, 43. It's pretty true. I mean, if we fear people, then they're the ones that gain our respect and we tend to think about them when we live our lives. Uh, but if we fear God, this unseen force, this person that's out there that we can't see, that has control over this world. And yes, he punishes people. He does. He disciplines his children. And he, he holds people accountable. Wow. That makes it a little different. It's like a little voice in the back of your mind that just tells you that even if you think you got away with it, did you really get away with it? So why is it important for us as parents and grandparents to teach our grandchildren and children to fear the Lord? Now, oftentimes we think about all the values that we can instill in their lives. This is probably the most important. Teach them that there is a God in heaven and that he holds us accountable. Someday we're going to have to Stand before him and give an account. And I, I think it's interesting there in Matthew chapter 10 when it says, by your words, you'll be justified or condemned. Interesting. By your words. Meaning, it'll reveal who we truly fear. The way that we act. The things that we say. The life that we choose. Uh, all vocalized, all verbalized all expressed in the minor conversations of our life. Uh, teach your grandkids to fear the Lord because if they fear Him, it's the beginning. It's the beginning. It starts them down the path of being able to succeed in life. Then, interestingly enough, God says, I want you to be holy as I am holy and I want you to fear your parents. Now, why is that important? parents a lot of parents aren't you know myself included and many others my kids got a saint when they got sue but i can see so many of my faults but parents why does it say that because truthfully we respect those that are given the responsibility of not only providing for us, I guess in a way you could say, 
originating our life, even though I know it comes from the Lord, but you were born into a family. Respect them. Fear them. Paul said if you do that in Ephesians chapter 6, it comes with a actually a, a blessing. There's a promise. You'll have a good life. I, I find it incredibly sad to see children that have really disinherited their parents and uh, to think that somehow God's going to somehow it's going to work out for them God says fear your parents interesting just a little interesting meaning they may not be the best and they may have done not the best job but you know what respect them they're your parents same as you would want your children to respect you because you're their parent and nothing hurts a parent more than to have a child that wants no relationship with them where that simply is broken it's almost a form of elder abuse I guess you could say because in so doing, you've broken the heart of the one that you were supposed to respect and love. I hope we don't have to wait until we lose those people that are dear to us and to come to a place where we realize how important they truly were in our life. It may not have been perfect. But there's a blessing that comes, a promise that comes with fear the Lord. He's out there. He's everywhere. He's the one we give an account to. It's the beginning of wisdom. Your life will be better if you have to account to someone. Think of all the people that choose not to believe that or to believe in anything. So they believe in themselves and look at the decisions that they make. And then fear your parents. God gave them to you as a visible example of what it means to show love even when in all honesty you have you I'm sure you can point out all kinds of reasons why you shouldn't have to fear your parents respect them God will bless you for it till next time friends God bless you